You are listening to Uranium Spotlight on Tuesday, July 16th, 2024. Brought to you by Pure Point Uranium Group, your exploration partner in Canada's Athabasca Basin. Amidst surging uranium demand, Pure Point's continuous 2024 exploration across their vast portfolio, backed by industry giants, underscores their focus on the next major discovery. And now your host, Chris Frostad. This week on Uranium Spotlight, Kazakhstan puts new taxes in place, India and Russia's relationship continues to tighten, and the nuclear industry struggles with skilled labor issues. Last week, the Uranium Spot price rose 50 cents to close the week at $86 US per pound U308. With Uranium now getting comfortable around the $85 mark, investors are questioning if now is the time to close out Uranium positions. However, the current Uranium cycle presents a unique opportunity underpinned by severe underinvestment, a chronic deficit, demand momentum, and geopolitical bifurcation of supply. These factors continue to suggest a bullish outlook. In the last bull market of 2007-2008, prices spiked to $138 per pound due to perceived shortages that never materialized thanks to various supply buffers. Today, the nuclear fuel supply chain is stretched to its limits. Prices are rising across enrichment, conversion, and spot uranium. Demand pressures are relentless with reactor restarts, extensions, and new projects being announced regularly. There's no excess inventory or secondary supply left, and even financial players are capitalizing on rising prices. A spike in uranium prices won't cure the supply deficit. Uranium mining is heavily regulated and slow, taking many years to bring new projects online. Unlike oil, short-term supply is inelastic. Uranium demand, including strategic stockpiling, utilities restocking, and financial demand, far exceeds annual consumption. Western utilities may need to restock their inventories, significantly increasing the supply deficit. After years of deficits and drawing down stockpiles, excess inventories have vanished. Financial players and supply insecurities with Russian-influenced suppliers further stress the market. Despite the recent price leveling, The structural deficit and robust demand momentum indicate there's lots more growth to come. The government of Kazakhstan has moved to raise taxes on mineral extraction, including uranium. Since January 1, 2023, Kazakhstan's taxation of Kazataprom's joint ventures and subsidiaries has been calculated by multiplying the weighted average price of uranium by the amount extracted and applying a mineral extraction tax rate of 6%. In 2025, that rate will increase to 9%. By 2026, a new differentiated tax rate for uranium will be introduced, potentially taxing some Kazataprom subsidiaries or joint ventures at a rate of 18% or higher. Under the new structure, the tax rate will vary based on the amount of uranium extracted annually. Smaller extractions will be taxed at lower rates, starting at 4% for up to 1.1 million pounds. As extraction amounts increase, the rates will rise progressively to 6%, 9%, 12%, and 15%, with the highest rate of 18% applying to amounts over 8.8 million pounds. In addition to these rates, there will be extra taxes based on the price of uranium. If the price exceeds $70, an additional half a percent tax will be added. This additional tax increases to 1% for prices over $80, 1.5% for prices over $90, and 2% for prices over $100, and 2.5% for prices over $110. The maximum tax rate under this plan would be 20.5%, applicable to production over 8.8 million pounds at a price of over $110. The minimum tax rate would be 4%, applicable to production of roughly 1.1 million pounds or less at a price below $70. This new differentiated tax rate means that different Kazata Prom joint ventures and subsidiaries will sometimes be taxed at different rates, depending on their extraction amounts and the market price of uranium. India and Russia have recently signed or considered several proposals related to the nuclear fuel cycle and nuclear power generation industry. President Modi and Putin met at Putin's residence in Moscow for a week of discussions. During the summit, Indian and Russian negotiators were close to finalizing a nuclear fuel supply deal for India's newest reactor, being built by Russia in the southern state of Tamil Nadu. Russia has already completed two other plants in India, with four more units still under construction. 
Additionally, plans for Russia to build another six reactors in India, as well as several small modular reactors in tropical areas were also discussed. These advanced small reactors are uniquely suited to environments with higher heat and sparser populations, as they're safer and cheaper than conventional reactors. Russia, through its state-owned corporation Rosatom, is currently building the largest number of nuclear reactors in foreign countries worldwide. The Russian government often uses its reactor building initiatives in foreign countries to build influence with those nations. Many Russian reactors come with fuel supply contracts for many years, securing Russia an extended level of influence and financial gain. Many countries, including Ukraine and the United States, have either been forced to abandon Russian fuel supplies or have made plans to do so following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 2022. For India, however, this seems unlikely. India has remained a close ally of Russia since the invasion and continues to be one of Russia's main buyers of fossil fuels, even as the rest of the world strives to move away from Russian oil and gas. Despite the recent U.S. ban on Russian uranium in May, which supposedly cut off $1 billion in nuclear fuel sales for the Russian nuclear fuel industry by 2028, Russia is still finding new avenues for its uranium and fuel sales. The expanding Indian market and other countries where it is building reactors such as Turkey and Egypt are key examples. India, for its part, wants to maintain close relations with the West and continues to source much of its uranium and nuclear fuel from Canada and France as well as Russian allies Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. However, India currently produces almost no uranium domestically, and what little is being mined is quickly running out. The global nuclear renaissance is encountering a significant challenge, a skilled worker shortage in many Western countries. Major employers in Canada's nuclear sector, including the massive uranium miner Cameco, are experiencing labor shortages. Cameco currently has 117 job postings on the industry job board Nuclear Jobs Canada. Other major companies such as Atkins Realis and Canadian Nuclear Laboratories also have close to 100 postings each. The number of people in the Canadian nuclear industry has increased over the past 12 years, from 30,000 in 2012 to 33,000 in 2019, according to a survey by the Canadian Nuclear Association. With the multi-billion dollar refurbishment projects underway at several large Canadian nuclear power plants, including Darlington and Bruce Power, the workforce is likely even larger now. The ongoing update of the Canadian Nuclear Association survey estimates an additional 10 to 15 percent increase in personnel currently working in the industry. Furthermore, the reactivation or near-term startup of new uranium mines in Canada may have boosted employment in the Canadian uranium mining sector. However, this increase in workforce is still insufficient to meet the rising demand. An Ontario Tech University professor estimated that less than 1,000 people graduated last year with a degree in radiation science or nuclear engineering across North America. The demand isn't limited to science and technology graduates. Businesses are also seeking machinists, technicians, and skilled trade workers such as electricians and boilermakers. In the U.S. and Europe, the skilled worker shortage is even more pronounced. Canada's large multi-year refurbishment projects have helped retain a significant portion of its workforce within the industry, but demand still far outweighs supply for skilled workers. Boss Energy is set to ship its first U-308 from the Honeymoon Project, with ramp-up activities running ahead of the feasibility study schedule. Over 57,000 pounds of uranium have been produced to date. The construction of NIM-CIX columns 2 and 3 is almost complete, paving the way for increased production. Boss Energy will make its first uranium sale this quarter with revenue to be received soon. The company is highly leveraged to the rising uranium price. With NIM, CIX Column 1 performing as expected, and Columns 2 and 3 on track for completion in Q3 and Q4 of 2024, Boss expects production to reach approximately 850,000 pounds of U308 by June 30th, 2025, in line with the feasibility schedule. Managing Director Duncan Crabe stated that the startup phase is proceeding smoothly, with production in fiscal year 26 projected to meet or exceed forecasts reaching 1.6 million pounds. Columns 4, 5, and 6 are expected to increase production to 2.45 million pounds annually by year 3. And that wraps up your Uranium Spotlight coverage for this week. For more news and events from the world of uranium, please tune in next week to Uranium Spotlight. 
You've been listening to Uranium Spotlight, your weekly podcast dedicated to delivering the latest news and events shaping the uranium fuel market and its critical role in the global energy landscape. Brought to you by PurePoint Uranium Group. PurePoint actively operates a portfolio of advanced uranium projects in the world's richest uranium district and has established partnerships with some of the largest uranium suppliers worldwide. While our passion for this subject is undeniable, it's essential to clarify that the information presented here is not investment advice. Instead, our goal is to offer an unbiased and comprehensive review of recent events that could impact uranium prices. Join us again next Tuesday for Uranium Spotlight.